Kinnick got its start in the U.S. striker market by taking the out-of-patent Walter P99 design and making clones. Since then, they've grown to expand the design and refine it even further. Meanwhile, Walter took their PPQ and turned it up to reintroduce the next evolution of the Walter striker pistol in plastic frames, and that's their PDP, or Performance Defensive Pistol. Both guns have a similar mission and a similar price tag, so today we'll be looking at the two. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and this is the Canik Mete SFT and this is the Walter PDP four and a half inch. And you, dear YouTube manual reviewer, have tuned in for the most ad-friendly content on the internet next to cats walking across keyboards. Both of these guns, as evidenced by the images on the screen, are completely stock as they come from the box. They are totally unmodified. Getting the rest of the administrative stuff out of the way, guys, I'm trying to get my silver play button from YouTube this year for 100,000 subscribers. So 75% of y'all aren't subscribed. If this is one of your repeat views of one of my videos, consider subscribing. Additionally, if you want more content like this, you can check out my Patreon page. A lot of the support for these videos is provided through my patron support, and I certainly appreciate it. There is exclusive content there for you guys. Now, because this video is being hosted on the internet and Al Gore's second rule when he invented the internet was you must compare one thing to another thing, we're comparing the Walter PDP to the Canik Mete SFT. Both of these guns are touted as being home defense, duty-driven pistols, and they're roughly Glock 17 size. They're about the same size. They're about the same weight. This one's a little bit lighter, believe it or not. But they do the same thing. This one is selling for about $600 in the first quarter of 2022, and this one can actually be found for the mid 400s if you shop around, which is a hell of a deal considering what this thing is providing. Similar sized pistols with a similar action and two different price points, so we're gonna talk about what those get you now. And honestly, guys, this is a tough one because I really like both of these pistols. I highly recommend both of them. There are video reviews here on the channel if you wanna see more in-depth stuff on either one of these guns. Starting with the Canik, the frame is a little bit narrow. This is very well situated for small hands. I put these in my wife's hands. She had no problem reaching the trigger on both of these and her hands are significantly smaller than my own. But that said, the traction, it shows up where you need it, which is gonna be the front and back strap and there's a little bit going on on the grip panel, but it's a little bit down low. It stops kind of at the mag catch and honestly, you need a lot of grip traction kind of up here where your support hand builds the grip and there's none to be had. The ergonomics of the grip and how it melts into your hand is pretty well done. There are no issues with the gun creating hot spots rubbing on knuckles. They provided a little bit of a double undercut so when you're building a firing grip, it sets up real nicely. Full pick rail in both examples. Both guns are ambi as far as slide release is concerned and they have a swappable mag catch. Transitioning onto the Walter PDP, the frame is, I mean, it's just, it's got better geometry and it's got better traction. So remember when I was crying where there's no traction on the Canik? Well, there's plenty of traction up here on the Walter and the end result is you get an absolute not going anywhere grip on the Walter. We'll get into that in a little bit because the Walter is a little bit snappier to shoot than the Canik. And that'll cover in the slide design, so stick around for that. But the geometry of the frame, I would say, is a little bit better. The way that they've sculpted the area underneath the trigger guard and how it sits in your hand is a little bit better, and the result is a very neutral shooting gun that returns to zero brilliantly. The Walter PDP is a very stable gun when shot fast. The mag button is a better design. It's just a bigger round button. It's a little bit easier for me to get at, so I prefer that on the Walter as well. Now let's talk about the balance balance real quick before we get off the frames because that factors into how the guns shoot. The PDP has a lighter slide so the gun is a little bit more balanced whereas the Canik has a heavier slide and is top heavier. That's still going to come up in the slide design thing guys but just bear with me. The balance on the PDP feels better so it tends to return to zero a little bit better so when shooting at speed the PDP feels more stable 
based around the traction for the enhanced grip as well as the sculpt of the frame in general. Crowning a victor between the two, it's definitely the Walter. The Walter frame is one of the best in class. Uh, the Smith & Wesson is probably the only other frame that I might like a little bit more, but honestly, I like the geometry on the Walter frame better than I like on the Smith. So starting with the Canik, they narrowed up the slide roughly around where the ejection port starts. They kind of skinnied it up, and the problem with doing that is the front serrations on the gun are very difficult to manipulate when overhand because the only place it bites is down here down low. So if you rack the slide underneath the frame, then it works, but trying to go over the top, it isn't great. And to that point, you see my busted knuckle? You may have noticed in the original Canic review that there was blood on the frame because I ended up uh, having the slide slip and knocking my knuckle on it. I did the exact same thing again when I was filming this comparison. So the front serrations just aren't very usable on the Canic. Like this is the cut that the Canic gave me. It's the rear serrations work well enough, but they're not super aggressive, but they're not the worst either. But the rear serrations work well. On the Canic, it is going to give you a loaded chamber indicator that uh, gets happy when there's a round in the chamber. A little fin pops up on the top of the slide. And the optic cut is a pocket that preserves your rear sight, but it is only cut for the RMSC footprint. But they provide the plate, which is a plastic plate, in the box with the pistol and all the screws you would need to mount it. Moving on to the PDP slide, the PDP slide has, it looks very understated. You're just like, wow, they just, you know, it looks like a block. It's just kind of uninspired. When you look at it closely, guys, that's where it starts to kind of pull away, in my opinion. So starting with the actual slide serrations, these things are cut deeply. They're basically dovetails, so it's never gonna let you go. But the serrations are absolutely fantastic, uh, really, got a lot out of it. So I imagine manipulating this pistol with like gloves on and stuff like that, it does a really great job. They've got basically the beginnings of a high power cut at the front of the slide. So for like chamber checks, very easy to manipulate. And there is no loaded chamber indicator, but instead the extractor has a little bit of red paint on the top. So when there's a round in the chamber, it pops out to the side and you can see that little bit of red to know that there is a round in the chamber. The optic cut, it comes on all of the PDPs, which is pretty awesome. Same with the Metes, they all come with optic cuts too. So way to go both companies for doing an amazing job. But they do not give you any of the mounting hardware for the PDP in the box. Instead, they give you a little piece of paper that you can scan with your smart phone and redeem for a free optics plate and it'll show up in about a week. Now to Walter's credit, they're doing it correctly because they all stay in stock. Some of the other manufacturers that do the free optic plate program or even try and just sell optic plates, they're never in stock. They're completely unobtainium and it's an absolute tragedy that that's the way that they're trying to put optics on their guns. As I mentioned, the slide on the Walter is two ounces lighter. The whole assembly, the barrel, recoil, spring, and slide is about two ounces lighter than the Canic, and that makes the Walter appreciably harder recoiling than the Canic when you're on the range shooting. So it kind of depends which way you want to go for your shooting experience. If you're the kind of guy who just punches paper at seven yards, then you're going to think, wow, this, this Walter is really a handful as far as recoil is concerned. If you're the kind of guy who runs practical drills and shoots at the speed of sight, you're going to appreciate how well the Walter returns to zero because it puts rounds right next to each other when shot at speed. I was really surprised by how close some of my shots were showing up on target when I was pulling the trigger as fast as I could. It's very, very stable at speed, but if all you do is slow fire, you're gonna be really surprised by how heavy recoiling it feels like. It's not unmanageable and it's honestly not a lot. It's just not what you're probably used to when shooting a nine millimeter gun. Picking a winner between the two is gonna depend on what your typical range experience is going to be like. Um, since I can shoot fast at my range, I prefer the Walter slide myself, but that's not gonna be everybody's choice and that's totally fine. Let's talk about triggers. The triggers far and away are exceptional on both of these guns. When they show up out of the box, there's going to be a little bit of creep on both of these triggers, meaning you're gonna 
pull the slack out of the trigger, you're gonna hit a wall, and if you slowly apply pressure, it's gonna move maybe one or two times before it breaks and releases the striker. Shooting both of these guns, about three to 400 rounds a piece, that cleaned up the creep in both of the triggers. So th at this point, the wall is super firm and is like a glass rod breaking, or at least as close as you can get to that using a striker action. The PDP had a little bit more creep in the trigger than the Canik. The Canik, I'll just go ahead and say it, wins the trigger thing far and away. Like the trigger out of the box on the Canik is possibly the best striker trigger going in any guns, full stop, period. So what makes the trigger in the Canik so remarkable? First and foremost, the trigger weight is not all that heavy. It's maybe four pounds. On my example, it pulls just north of four pounds, which is on the lighter side of acceptable for a duty style gun. But the trigger shoe is a super broad face. It feels very easy to pull straight to the rear. The ergonomics of the frame are such that it gives you excellent trigger reach so you can manage the trigger whether you like to you know, go all the way to the first knuckle or pull out and only use splitting the pad. Whichever your trigger pull technique is, you'll be able to manage it on the Canik. But what we're really here to talk about is the trigger pull experience. So let's cock our striker on our unloaded gun and show you what I mean. So right there, there's a good bit of travel, but we're all the way to the rear of the guard, which is a great place for a trigger to break. It doesn't break really far forward so that there's a lot of over travel. It breaks at the rear of the guard, which is to the good. And then you just build up pressure till about four pounds and then that's it. Did you see how little movement there is on the trigger breaking? So resetting the striker and in the reset, this is important. I put it next to the camera, but you'll lose the light. That's it, that's all it is. And the reset, it forces your finger forward and it is forceful, it's tactile, it's audible, it's all the things you want in a reset. The trigger pull throw is almost as short as my 2011 open gun on a striker gun. It costs just north of $400. That's an insane value proposition from the Canik. That's really, really good. Just in the name of completeness, we'll do the same thing on the Walter because the Walter has a very good trigger as well. Now the trigger shoe is even flatter across the face. I actually prefer the ergos of the Walter trigger shoe, but neither one is particularly bad. So right there, about three quarters of the way back, I'm on the wall for the trigger. I keep mounting the pressure till I get just over, I believe about five pounds, and then it's gonna go. There's still a tiny bit of creep on the Walter trigger. It's not quite as broken in as well as the Canik at this point, because I've had the Walter not quite as long. Reset on the Walter is similarly uh, spring assisted, so it pops forward for you, but there's just a little bit more travel. There's maybe 100% more travel, and that's not to say that you know the, the trigger reset is very long on the Walter, because it's not, it's still very short, but, the Canik, it's just, it's insanely, insanely short. So the Canik has the better trigger between the two, but both of these guns have probably better than all their other peers in the category, no question. Let's talk about the iron sights. So the iron sights that come on the guns, the Walter is cut with Glock sights and comes with a fully adjustable rear. And you're gonna need it because I had to zero my rear sight. Uh, it was hitting about eight inches low at about 12 yards. I brought up the rear sight elevation and voila, all of a sudden I was hitting point of aim, point of impact. But that all said, I don't like the three dots that they provided. Like the front sight, the dot just, it kind of disappears. It's the same size as the ones on the rear, but because it's further away from the eye, it's perceived as being smaller. I really don't like the sight picture of the sights that come on it. It's not terrible, but it's just not great. The Canik went with almost like a tack to bro sights. There's a ledge, so if I wanna like LARP at the range and rack it on my holster and all that great stuff, I can do it because you can see that the ledge on the rear sight is such that it'll grab your boot or your belt or your holster or your buddy's holster, or whatever it is you do, you can do it with the Canik rear sight. The dot on the front sight of the Canik is significantly larger than the dots at the rear to where they appear to be roughly the same size when you're focusing downrange. So that's to the good. The dots appear to be the same size, but more importantly, the machining and how the sights are set up, it's just a very clean sight picture. It was much, much easier for me to shoot precisely with the iron sights with the way the Canik sights are set up than it was with the Walters. Second go with the PDP at 10 yards. The sights, that's the Canik, that's the PDP. I think the sights are just easier for me to get along with for my eyes with the Canik. 
If you're only shooting iron sights and that's all you care about, the Canik sights are nearly good enough to say that you don't need to change them. I might just sharpie the rear sight white dots and call it a day, like the rear sight is pretty squared away. Since the optics available for the Mete out of the box, unless you get like the, what is it, Patnik Industries, I believe has an adapter to where you can use full size optics, but if you're just using the RMSC footprint optics, almost all of them will co-witness with the factory sights, which is cool. It's like a lower quarter, lower third co-witness, which is what you want. And before we go on to pick a winner, we have to talk about the price tags and what the guns are shooting for in the first quarter of 2022. When I bought my Canik SFT, it had just come out and I paid $520 before shipping and tax and all that kind of stuff. The Walter PDP, this is a T&E gun, but if I were to buy it right now, I would spend just under $600 before shipping and transfer and tax and all that stuff. At this point, the Canics are available for like the mid 400s, as low as 430 is what I saw when I was putting the script together for this video. So with the value for what you're getting, cause it, I mean, this sucker comes with a holster, it comes with an 18 and 20 round magazine. So it's a, uh, it's a pretty strong value for, for what you're getting. That said, the Walter is still, in my opinion, ahead of the class because the case that it comes with is great, comes with two 18 round magazines, at least in the full size versions of the gun. And as I mentioned, I think the grip with what they've got going on is probably one of the best ones going. Everybody's economic situation is different. Maybe you're a guy who doesn't shoot a lot and is just looking at for a gun that is going to sit in the drawer or the safe or whatever you're gonna do with it and you're not gonna shoot it a terrible amount. So something like the Canix price tag is going to be a more attractive to you. But if you're a tactic bro who likes to get out on the range and train all the time, you're not gonna be as dollar sensitive on the PDP as you would potentially be because you're gonna spend more in ammo pretty quickly for a $600 gun. So that all said, I am teeing up my decision between these two guns. These guns are both fantastic pistols. I could recommend either one enthusiastically. The Canik magazines historically have been a little bit trickier to find, whereas the more expensive magazines for the Walter, they're about 50 bucks a pop, are widely available. One thing that's worth noting that I found really amusing is because Canik does have issues with getting magazines into the States apparently, Canik magazines will work in the Walter, but the Walter magazines will not work in the Canik. So I found that really amusing just do with that information what you will so that all said which way am I going to go now bear in mind that the type of shooting that I do is generally more dynamic I like to shoot fast and I would don't mind changing sights on a gun that I would shoot a lot so for my situation, I really think that the PDP is more squared away than the Canik. And in my situation, I would pay the upgrade to get at that because the difference I would make up in an ammo spin in a heartbeat. But that all said, if all you're left with is the Canik, you shouldn't feel undergunned, outgunned in any way. The Mete series of pistol really raised the bar for what these Canics had on offer and they've always had phenomenal value. The performance of the guns is fantastic. I really like this pistol as well. I'd be fine either way. But I'm curious which way you would go. Given the options, would you pick the Walter or would you pick the Canik? Sound off in the comments and let me know which direction you'd go. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks guys.